Good morning, Mount Island and the world. We are here at the Mount Island Baptist Church, 131 South Old Tyson, to bring you the worship for this Sunday, September the 20th. And we are grateful and thankful to God for your presence with us. We have in the sanctuary with me, not the supporting cast, so to speak, of Brother Green, our, music, our director of music, Sister Woods, who's over our camera and audio camera, and Brother Michael Germany, who is giving me the up, up sign right now, uh, over the audio and video of the sanctuary. We're so happy to have you on this day of worship. Thank God for your presence, and we're going to be begin by Brother Green. He's going to bring us a selection. We have come, to, come into his house, or this house. If you have your worship sheet, then join with us and we'll read it together. It so reads, He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, 
my God. In him will I trust. Surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. May God add a blessing upon the readers, hearers, and doers of his word. Let us in our opening prayer time, my brothers and sisters, with our heads bowed, shall we approach the throne of our Lord and our God. Father God, the God of all creation, we thank you for this golden opportunity to come into your house and worship you. Yes, if we're not in your house, we can worship you wherever we are as those who are, who are worshiping by virtual assistance. Gracious God, we thank you. We thank you for all of the viewing community and may the things that are said and done here glorify you and their lives be enriched. Now, Lord, we understand that you are God and you are God all by yourself. Oh, yes. And we are worthy, you are worthy, worthy, worthy to be praised. So as we enter this worship time, let us humble ourselves before you and let us, from the depths of our heart, approach you in sincerity and in truth. We give you the glory, and we give you the praise, and we give you the honor. In Jesus' name, let us all say, Amen. God bless you. Thank you for your presence. Well, announcements. I want to announce to you that from the survey, I know everybody is wondering, how did the survey come out of... Uh, that I ask concerning, are you ready to reopen our on-site worship? And I will say at this point, it has been and is favorable, the, the number returned favorable. I had many to text me and say, uh, Pastor Roberts, we'll follow your leadership, but we're glad that you're considering us to ask us such a question. And I appreciate that because the decision I make is not about me. It's about all of us. And so somewhere, I'm not saying a date yet, somewhere in the month of October, we will plan to reopen limited socially distance wise. And you will be, I'm gonna give this Sunday, uh, couple of Sundays before that time, I will give you hand, I mean, uh, in your hand instructions on how we're going to do it. And I expect you to follow, follow them. It won't be worship as usual. We're going to follow the same format that we're doing here for our virtual worship. There won't be a choir, I can tell you that now. And it's going to be limited uh, as far as our interaction is concerned. But we will eventually, hopefully, by the power of God, evolve into what the Lord wants. We're going to do it gradually. Amen? Now, so just be waiting, patient. You've done real well, and you'll be getting the information later. All right? Now, I know I've opened myself up for a whole lot of on-site questions. Oh, Pastor, what day is? Let me know. I will let everybody know at the same time, all right? Now, let's move on to something for next week. Our association, Cypress Baptist District Association, <coughs> pardon me, uh, will have a virtual association. We've been working on this. We still, we got a little few rough ends yet. But we will have a virtual association starting on Monday night, which is the 21st, this Monday, with Cyprus in Prayer. Uh, it, will by, it will be by Zoom. If you have Zoom on your phone or your laptop, then you can connect with us. I can give you the coordinates. However, I'll urge those in 
the same household just use one device because we'll have about 100 plus people uh, uh, on, we hope, or we have that much space. Uh, Monday night, I'll say, we'll be in prayer. Tuesday night, we will have highlights from our minister's conference and, we, and, and the urshers. Wednesday night will be the labor and Congress. Thursday night will be the women's department and the parent by the, the moderator's address. We'd like for you to join us. Now, uh, it, there may be some hiccups here and there. We, you know, we haven't done this before from the standpoint of the association. Uh, but we're going to give it a try and we're going we're gonna to cut our teeth, so to speak, as we go along. Uh, the coordinates will be on our website and they also, it will be on um, Tri-County uh, Press web uh, uh, Facebook page, as well as on our Facebook, Facebook page. Uh, and they're, they're separate in that you, you can connect by <coughs> uh, mobile, by laptop or by tablet or PC, or you can connect by phone. All right, so that starts on Monday night. The time on Monday is 6 p.m. And then each night after that will be 7 p.m. May God bless you and may he keep you is our prayer. That are, those are our announcements. We will have, uh, we laid to rest two uh, giants of our community on uh, Saturday and, and actually today. Uh, Brother Joe Trailer on Saturday, uh, I, an icon of Mount Pleasant. The tremendous with all of our young people and adults and in the church community. And then uh, Sister Earlene Jackson, Henry Jackson, uh, who is uh, the sister of our uh, member and was a member here, or who grew up here in this church for many years. Uh, will be laid to rest today. Uh, her service will be at, at uh, South Jefferson Baptist Church at 2 o'clock. May God bless you and may he keep you as I pray. And we pray for all the bereaved families. Now, Brother Green is coming back and the selection is God is keeping me. Amen. And thank God for that. God is keeping me. God is keeping me. God 
God is keeping me. He blessed me. And he kept me yes. from all harm. Thank God he's keeping me. Thank God he is Amen. keeping me. Thank God he is keeping me, I tell you. I don't know where I'd be or where you'd be if it was not for the Lord. Thank you, Brother Green. Thank you. Now we're at responsive reading, and our responsive reading is taken from that book that is considered probably the oldest book of the Bible. And it is the book of Job. The book of Job. And we are going to be reading from Job, the first chapter, verses 6 through 9. Verses 6 through 9. If you have your worship sheet or your Bible and ready to join with us, then we are at verse 6, shall we? Now there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord. And Satan came also among them. And the Lord said unto Satan, Satan, uh, unto Satan, sorry. And the Lord said unto Satan, Whence cometh thou? Then Satan answered the Lord and said, From going to and fro in the earth, and from walking up and down in it. And the Lord said unto Satan, Hast thou considered my servant Job, that there is none like him in the earth, a perfect and upright man, one that feareth God and is chewing evil? Then Satan answered the Lord and said, Doth Job fear God for naught? May the Lord add a blessing upon the readers, hearers, and doers of his word. Does God, does Job fear God for not? Satan is actually saying, is he fearing you because of the things you do for him? Or does he fear you just out of awe and praise for who you are. That's a challenge. And you are, we're going to find out later in the sermon that God puts Satan's challenge to, to the test by using Job to show how Job was very dedicated to the Lord. It's prayer time. And let us bow together that we may dedicate ourselves unto this God that is so loving, so kind, and so giving to us. If wherever you are, if you would join in with your family, and if you would bow your heads in humble submission, then we will call upon the God of heaven and of earth. The God that neither slumbers nor sleep. The God through all of the annals of time has brought us to this point and is, and is as the song we just heard said, he's keeping me. We ought to stop long enough, clear our minds, and get in a thanksgiving spirit and just tell God, thank you. Thank you God. Let our mouth utter what our hearts feel. Thank you. Thank you We're not worthy of all the goodness you provide. And as our forefathers would say, You've been better to us than we could have been to ourselves. You provided 
salvation through your son Jesus. Faith in him as the only begotten son of God who died on Calvary. Whosoever believeth in him should not perish. Thank you, Lord, for we have no other way to escape the penalty of sin. And then, Lord, our health and our strength. There are many among us during these, this pandemic time, the latest count, there's almost 200,000 in this country alone who have lost their lives to the pandemic. And there are countless of others who have been hospitalized, who have been at the brink of death, who, have, who are now suffering, and those who have recovered. And we don't know what recovery is because we're finding out that even when you recover over the initial symptoms, that there are lingering, there's still lingering impacts to your body, to your spirit, to your mind. Oh Lord God Almighty, we know you're in charge and we know that nothing happens without your permission. So we're going to govern ourselves by calling on you. For you have protected us thus far and we know you will protect us all. In these times across this whole world, please, Master, be merciful to us. I don't know when the pandemic is going to be over, but I know that you stand at the realms of the universe. And you, and you alone, can make that answer. Now, Lord, during this era of, of, of uncertainty and what have you, we know that if one thing is certain, that the God that we call upon, the God that we serve, is the same today, same yesterday, and tomorrow. Bless and keep those families that are suffering right now. Those who are looking at eviction, those who haven't had a job for weeks, for months. Those who don't know where their next meal is coming from. And those tender children that are, that are trying to go back to school, and whether it be the elementaries and the high schoolers and, and the college. And Master, Washington, Paris, London, Tel Aviv, nobody has the answer. We just have to wait on you and live according to what our scientists tell us is the best under the circumstances. Now, Master, touch those that are in charge those that are in high places in our government, from Washington all the way down to the local government. Guide them, give them wisdom, give them understanding, give them the desire to walk with you, that what they say and do may be pleasing in your sight. And then, Father, we thank you. We thank you for all that you do. Thank you for the church family. Thank you for their patience. Thank you, O oh God, for this community and how we are slowly, seemingly regaining from this pandemic. And then, Lord, we give you the praise. We give you the honor. We are surely giving it to you because, Lord, we know there's no other way. No one else, regardless, no one else can provide and do for us as you. In the name of Jesus, in the precious name of Jesus, the one who died for our sin, Lord, we ask these blessings of you and give these things. And all of God's children say, Amen. It is Him time. And you know the anthem of my knowledge. All thy stretch, my hand to thee. No other help I know. If thou withdraw thyself from me, oh, whither shall I go? 
What did thine only son endure before I drew my breath? What pain, what labor to secure my soul from endless death? Shall we? Father. Listen to Brother Green. I stretch. Yes, I do. Yes. Oh, yes, I do. No other. No other. No other No other help. I know. Lord, I know. <laughs> oh, yeah. for 